I guess I started playing basketball at the age of around four. Uh, just fun on the weekends with my friends and things. My parents signed me up. And uh, I think I really uh, came to notice that basketball was a true talent of mine around, I would say, 13, 14 years old. Uh, clearly, because I was always athletic and tall because of my father. But uh, I began to get good and uh, get recognition and people started to ask. And so around that time, I figured that I could go to college and I figured if I could make it to college, I could make it pro. Yeah, it was just kind of natural. You know, my father played basketball. Uh, he didn't go pro, but he played, you know. So when I was growing up, he still played with his friends. And I would go to games and watch and want to be like him, you know, doing things. And sometimes he'd take me to the gym and, you know, I just kind of fell in love with the game and uh, fell in love with working and, you know, the sweating after and things like that. So uh, it was just kind of natural to me. I would say this is one of the, the tougher tougher leagues I've played in, you know, I played in the NBA and, and then I played in the D League and then last year I spent some time in Puerto Rico and I would say this is a, a tougher league because it's based on skill set and, and, and fundamentals, you know, you guys are kind of uh, over here, it's, it's kind of uh, by the book and, you know, that's that's unheard of, well not really unheard of, it's kind of like a lost, lost step uh, and back in the States because everything is now is bigger, faster, stronger, jump higher, things like that. A lot of guys don't work on the fundamentals as much as they do here. And I think that's what separates uh, the game here and there. And as far as uh, being satisfied, I, you know, I came over here with one goal, and, and that that was his, uh, that's to win. And uh, you know, we win and we lose and whatever. But you know, we we're only as good as your last game, and we won. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. You know, and I just want to continue to win and, and win as much as we can uh, for this program. I would say the same. I would say you guys are right. Uh, at the beginning, it was kind of, kind of like a rough patch, rough road. The first month or so, everyone was kind of getting to know each other, trying to figure out things. Some guys were quiet in their shells. Some guys were outspoken, so they spoke too much, and the guys, some guys, didn't speak enough. But uh, I think now it's all kind of balanced out, and everyone shows their true colors, and uh, you can kind of take it for what it's worth. But. Uh, once we're on that court, you know, uh, we try our best to, to work as one. And then uh, when we're off the court and we're in the locker room or we're out to eat, uh, there is no more working as one. Everyone's their own person, and we all accept each other for uh, as silly as we can be. Uh, and uh, that's just kind of how it goes. We pick on the young guys because that's that's what you do. And they'll pick on the young guys when it, it's their turn. But uh, we have a good time. Oh, like a prankster, oh, like a jokester. Uh, not Mirza, is just crazy in general. I would say the, the prankster, the joker, is either Doran or uh, Valerio, Mazzola. No, 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 not at all. Mirza, yeah, Mirza's crazy, like, just because he's crazy. Now, when it comes to messing with other people, it's definitely, it's definitely Duran or Valerio. And Valerio's got tricks and card tricks and he can bark like a dog and scare you. It's it's unbelievable. You know, I don't I don't think anything is quite over until it's it, it's it's over. And uh, you know what I'm saying? For for a while there, you know, we lost a couple games in a row and it looked like to be a long shot. We dropped pretty far and you know, and that everything can be solved by winning. That's what they say in the world of sports. You can solve everything by winning. And uh, we won a few games and now we're a few spots up and we're tied with a few teams and you know we got this week to take advantage of and take a, to take either take a step forward or take a step back but I think uh, we can make the playoffs and I think uh, that's the right thing to be aiming for. Of course, of course. I mean the main goal is to win the game in, in front of you so this week it would be to win on Sunday when we play. And then next week, whenever we play Sunday or Monday or Saturday, whichever day we play, that's the main goal. Uh, but the, the big picture is obviously the playoffs for us. I would say the strongest part of my of me as a basketball player, I would say uh, my size and versatility. Because uh, I'm a lot, you know, I'm tall uh, for my skill set to be able to run and dribble and jump and shoot. 
So being able to be versatile on both sides of the floor and, and guard different guys or uh, play different positions on offense, I think that's always been a strong suit. Uh, that's always been my, my jet card uh, since I've you know, been a younger kid, you know, and I've just worked on that because I knew uh, what well, my father knew at a young age, uh, you're going to be tall. So I want you to be able to do more than just one thing. So that's just been something I, I continue to build on. As far as uh, something else I, I need to get better at, probably uh, uh, my competitiveness. I'm a little too competitive at times, and uh, it can be taken the wrong way. But either that and um, uh, probably getting to the basket. I like dunking the ball, but I don't do it a lot. I would like to do that more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way, way, way too passionate. But, I, but that's that's just me in general. I hate losing at anything. They, like when we play Uno in the in the locker room, I hate losing. I hate losing. I throw the cards on the floor and stuff. So. Yeah, any kind of losing bothers me. <laughs> I have uh, I've kind of wandered around and figured some things out on my own. I've ate at some really good restaurants. I've seen some pretty cool statues. I've sat at uh, Piazza Victoria a few times. I've walked around the center. So I really do like the city. Really good food here. Uh, so uh, that's a plus. Uh, but other, I love ice cream. Uh, actually, I'm going to get some ice cream tonight uh, from this place. Uh, they told me about uh, big waffle cone, two scoops. Amazing. Uh, ah, uh, I forget the name. It's like Chalateria. It starts with a T. It's like T E L E S I O, I think. It's a great spot. Cheap ice cream, but you get a lot. But it's so good. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that one. But uh, but other other than that, outside the court, uh, I'm, I'm a simple guy. Uh, my age, I like playing video games sometimes, reading here and there. Love music from any kind of music. I listen. Uh, R&B, hip hop, country music, anything I can bob my head to, I like it. As you guys can probably tell in the warm-ups, it surprised me. I mean, I've played out the country before, uh, just like little foreign tours, two, three weeks in Poland and Germany, and it was just like smaller crowds. And obviously, I I knew that it, it would be bigger crowds, but I I didn't know that people would be this passionate about the game every week. And when you're driving into the game, you see them walking in. It's just like every week, every week. Like win or lose the week before, uh, they're there. And uh, that, that's, that's, that's a huge thing, you know, that keeps guys like us, you know, I mean, that keeps our spirits up. Because even though, you know, we could have a game like Cremona and lose so bad, next week we played at home and the gym was still packed. So that means a lot. So we thank them for that.